Today we are visiting Pace Gallery to see three exhibits by three different artists, starting with this exhibit by Tara Donovan. And honestly, this is one of my favorite things about going to a quote unquote mega gallery is that you can see a lot of art in a very short amount of time. This exhibit is so much more than what it appears to be at first glance. Tara's work is created from commonplace materials, and I'm sure if you look super closely, you can tell that this sphere was actually made up of plastic straws. And this is something that's very common in Tara's practice. She's used rubber bands, coffee cups, coffee straws, like we'll see in the other room. And she uses all of these objects to capture and bend the light so that the viewer really feels like they're a part of the work. And you could really feel and experience that as you're watching even now these children and viewers walk around the work see their own reflections kind of bouncing off of it it's very interactive for being quote unquote uh, minimalist artwork This is the largest room of the exhibit, and in this room, Donovan has a series of all black monochromatic works titled Apertures. And similarly to her transparent works in the other rooms that you just saw, at first glance, these seem like a little harsh, a little sterile. But when you look closer, you can see really lively patterns. There's polka dots, there's swirls, you get a little little peek at that when you see the light reflect off of it. They really remind me actually a lot of Mary Corse's paintings. But I think the craziest thing about these works is that I these aren't paintings, these are sculptures that look like paintings. If you can see, these are made up of what have to be hundreds of thousands of those tiny black coffee straws to create these really intricate patterns. On the second floor is an exhibit by the artist Adrian Guinea, and the exhibit is titled The Hooligans. Now, if you don't know what a hooligan is, it is essentially a rebel or a bully or a vandal. And Guinea's show is referencing the crucial role of rebellion in the artistic process and how it's so important for an artist to reject or ignore tradition and to create something new. I feel like this is kind of ironic and it's at first it sounds a little hypocritical because if you're familiar with a lot of fine arts like I show in a lot of my videos, really great artists do constantly reference art history and in fact Guinea is very much known for uh, referencing famous works throughout art history by Turner and Monet and Van Gogh in his classic abstract figurative style. But what he's trying to say through this exhibit is that those artists 
you know, the Turners, the Monets, the Van Goghs, that they were rebels of their time. And Guinea is really trying to do the exact same thing in his work. He's trying to push the boundaries by inserting small and modern details. Things like a baseball cap, a cowboy hat, or sneakers. He's trying to take what his predecessors have done before him and reinvent it in a way that is modern, just like Monet and Caravaggio and all of the other rebellious hooligan artists of a previous time did. In the press release, Guinea expresses his distaste for anything that's too on the nose. He really references works with an art history. Think of the really famous work Ophelia, of the woman sort of lying dead in the creek. And he mentions that there's just too much symbolism here. It's too obvious. It's too on the nose. And what Guinea is trying to do is not tell an obvious story, but to convey a feeling. And I think that's honestly what I like the most about abstract expressionism in general, is that it gives the viewer enough to emotionally attach to, but there's still mystery and there's still room for interpretation. The third and final exhibit that we're going to see today is on the third floor of the gallery and it's a completely different exhibit, it's a completely different medium than what we've seen before. It is a series of photographs by the famous photographer Irving Penn. Even if you don't think you're familiar with his works, you've probably seen them flipping through magazines or looking at a billboard at some point in your life. I also love what Pace has done. They've inserted a ton of quotes either by those that knew the photographer well or by the photographer himself throughout the exhibit. So I kind of felt like he was like whispering in our ear and speaking to us as we went along. It was just like a really nice personal touch. So the works in this exhibit uh, spans slightly over a 60 year period from 1939 to 2000 and all of these works are examples of photographism which is a term that Penn coined and what it is or what it means is it's a form of expression through photography to create sort of a graphical reality it's really the combination of photography and design. Penn really approaches or approached photography like a painter would, planning his composition, focusing on form, creating out of people as opposed to letting the shot be just about the person itself. And this makes sense because his background was actually in painting. And I think Penn is most probably famous for his high fashion photography. We'll see some of it over on the wall. He's been in all of the major publications around the world, but he's very famous for his photographs that appeared in Vogue magazine. Thanks for coming along with me today. Let me know if you guys like the shorter video format where I just go to a few galleries. 
It was kind of nice to be able to see sculpture, photography, and painting all in one visit.